Hey friend, Roger Christopherson here again with another first listen review. Um, today we're going with one that uh, I was a little confused about at first, and after like looking into it, I realized who these guys were, and had actually forgotten about them. And uh, the band is called Sword, not to be confused with The Sword, which is exactly what I did when I heard there was a new album coming out, because I thought this band had broken up, but I was thinking of The Sword. Completely different style of music, still a great band, um, but not the same band at all. Um, the new album is just called Three. Obviously, it's their third album. Um, now, the funny part is, I just like realized who this band was after I was got into it and started reading up on them. I went and looked, and I have one of their other albums. Um, they're released in 1988, called Sweet Dreams, and I remember that there was back, I don't know, like years ago, early 90s. There's a a used uh, cassette. Um, I'm sure they had other stuff there too. It was mainly cassettes store. Uh, about an hour away from my house, and me and a few other people used to drive out there, and we would specifically go just to the store, and we'd be there for a couple hours at least. This is a, I love those days when you just could just go to a record store, dig through what they had. You never knew what you're gonna find, and this is where I found that album, um, Sweet Dreams, and I remember listening to it quite a bit, and I, I put it away, and it's actually in one of my stands I have upstairs, or in my house where I have like all my music displayed and all the stuff that I used to listen to a lot, it's on there, but I really haven't even paid any attention to it in, like, years. Forgot all about it. Um, shame on me, I know. I never got their first album meta metalized, I'm guessing that's what it's called, it came out in 86. And I guess they have a live one called uh, Live and Hammersmith came out back in 16. I just, this is one of those bands that, like, dropped off my radar for whatever reason, don't know. Um, they don't have a whole lot of albums, but... Uh, you know, they only had two studio albums up until, you know, this past week. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot to go get, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I used to listen to a lot and then kind of forgot all about them. So I had to, like, refresh my brain here. <clears throat> Although, uh, after getting done listening to this new album, I can tell you, they haven't lost anything. Um, it's their first one in 34 years, it looks like. Um, little studio album, anyway. Uh, the Canadian band... Um, came out early 81, uh, formed back then. I uh, don't know any of the members of this band, quite honestly, because like I said, I would kind of forgot about them. But uh, yeah, it looks like the members are Rick Hughes, Mike Plant, Michael Rock, and Dan Hughes. Uh, let me tell you what, the singing on this doesn't sound like he has missed a beat. This, uh, in fact, some of these songs are like, I think, let's stand right up there with some of the... Uh, it's like classic rock Juice Priest-ish style, I guess, is how you would look at it. I guess they started out as a, uh, a Kiss tribute band. So this all the stuff I just learned today. I didn't even know that. I kind of read up a little bit because, like I said, I just kind of like never paid much attention to these guys. But uh, sitting down listening to this, first song kicked in. Uh, you know, it didn't do a whole lot for me. It's called Bad Blood, and then it kicks off into you know a few other... Song. There's only eight songs on this whole thing, but one of the other ones that I uh, really liked was You Dirty Pig, or Dirty Pig, uh, and uh, man, that one, I I really like that one. I know it's kind of a weird song, but actually I kind of liked it. And uh, and uh, Spread the Pain was the other one that I, I really liked. There was also this other weird little interlude thing there. I don't... I don't know why bands do that that didn't really seem to do anything except kind of disrupt the flow of it. I don't know, I kind of look at interludes most of the time as like, make it part of the song or just don't do it. It didn't seem to serve any purpose here, but other than that, pretty good rocking album. I It was really short though, like 35 minutes. I You know, there's been a lot of these lately. Like I've said this like a number of times now, I know. All these albums are like 35 minutes. You know, I, I kind of like around... A couple more songs. Ten songs seems good to me. It's right when you are got your fill, but you don't want to like overdo it and get bored of the album either. And there's no nothing I would consider filler on this album. Um, it's just awesome to see bands of this style out there still making good music. I liked it. Um, I'm going to want to pick up that other uh, so, um, studio album there, even though I know it's going to be sound like very dated in the 80s. I don't care. I like that kind of music. It's fun to find this stuff and listen to it again. 
especially stuff that I haven't heard, but that style of music again, I guess is what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, this was actually a really fun listen. I'm, I'm glad I picked this one up. It's probably, I think it's a week late. I believe I got this one last weekend. I got so much music here lately that it's kind of hard to keep track of what I've actually got and when I got it. But this week there wasn't quite as many that really inter- interested me so much. I kind of skipped over this one. So I wish that I hadn't at this point, but I'm glad I finally picked it up and uh, gave it a listen because it uh, was a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, tell me what you guys think, you know, play, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff, and uh, talk to you in the next one. See you.